Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. The Holy Spirit reveals Christ's humility in me. You see, there is an expectation from the divine presence that we humble ourselves before God. It says Jesus humbled himself. It says it many places in, in throughout Scripture. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, Peter says in his letter, and he will exalt you. Our part is to humble ourselves. His part is to exalt. We have to do our part to enter in upon that character and nature that God longs to perfect in us through his son, Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is what brings that nature and character that we see in Jesus, by which he was perfectly shown to be one with the Father. What makes Jesus God, friends, is his humility in that he is completely, perfectly one with the Father. That God is all and in all of him. All of him is the Father because he's wholly given to the Father. And that is the perfection of God's love. It's the perfection of the beauty of his holiness. It's the wonder of his person that God is not satisfied unless you and him are perfectly one. And this is what he works through his spirit in you and me. And the nature of that oneness is humility. And it's the humility we see in Jesus, the humility that he perfected in his human flesh as he offered his body without blemish to the Father by his eternal spirit, Hebrews 9, 14 says. Oh, how I pray this, how I pray this. Father, I thank you by the eternal spirit by which Jesus offered himself without blemish to you. You perfect me in his humility. You perfect me in that spirit, Father, to be wholly yours without blemish. There's nothing in me that is contrary to you. All that's in me is yours, Father. It is yours. Oh, how I long for this and pray for this. So I want to read to you where Jesus here in John chapter 16, verse 12 says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. You see, you have people who want to comprehend things with their intellect that can only be comprehended by the Holy Spirit. Your intellect is important, but it must not be your God. It must not be your master. It must not be the ruling force of your life. It must be an instrument in the hands of the Spirit. It must be something you wholly give to God. Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. In other words, Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 9, verse 23, 24, you see, we need, we need wisdom, and it is a work of God to give us wisdom, to give us intelligence, to give us a good intellect, but that is not the master. The master is the Lord himself. And he says here, Jesus, I have so much I want to share, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me. You see, the Holy Spirit is not seeking to be glorified. No, he's seeking to express and bring into our conscience the glory of Christ in the Father's presence. He will glorify me, for he will take of what's mine and declare to you, and all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Declare it means unveil it, reveal it in you. You see, the Holy Spirit takes that beauty of perfection of humility that Jesus brought from heaven as the Son of God and perfectly embodied in his life on earth and then demonstrated the perfection of that humility in his death, wholly given to God. 
And then God shows that that humility was perfect in his sight by resurrecting Jesus from the dead by the spirit of holiness and declaring him to be his son. Oh, friends, it is the Father who declared that Jesus is his son by exalting him to his right hand and making him the heir of all things that were actually created by him and through him and for him. And here Jesus is in heaven in the perfection of that humility wherefore he is and he alone is worthy to open the scrolls and praised as the Lamb of God in heaven and that no one in heaven and earth and under the earth has the kind of honor in the presence and the perfection of the image of the Father that Jesus has. And that life of perfect humility is what the Holy Spirit so longs to reveal in you, to open your understanding, to begin to open your eyes and reveal it in the consciousness of your heart and in and, and manifest it in your body. You see, it says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting at verse 9, as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words of man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaching teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. In other words, you see it throughout scriptures and the Holy Spirit in us opens these scriptures. What eye has not seen, what ear has not heard is a quotation from the Old Testament to help us realize by what the Holy Spirit has said, what the Heavenly Father has now freely given us in Christ. But the natural man, the man who is just leaning on his intellect, while the intellect in itself isn't wrong, but it may not be your master. The Holy Spirit needs to be your master. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The things of God are spiritually discerned. It takes the Holy Spirit in you to be able to appreciate it. But he who is spiritual judges all things, you see, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who knows the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. What you see in Jesus knowing the Father and Jesus saying, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. If you've seen me, you've seen my Father. Jesus saying all these beautiful things about his relationship with the Father. The Father loves me. The Father is always with me. I always do what pleases my Father. The kind of language that you see in Jesus is what he now gives into you, something that your natural eye could never perceive, what your natural heart could never, never attract to itself. That which you could not see or could not hear or could not perceive in your heart is now revealed in you by the Holy Spirit. Now you begin to think with the mind of Christ. Now you begin to enjoy this humility, this submission to the Father, this trust in the Father, this reliance, independence on the Father. You used to say, oh, I never change. I'm always still falling short. I still have all these weaknesses in my human nature. Now you think different, you talk different. Now you say, oh, my loving Heavenly Father, I am so grateful for your grace that in my weakness, your strength is made perfect. Oh, Father, I'm so grateful to just be a poor, weak human being 
so that I may enjoy the riches of your glory. For you said it through Jesus, in the Beatitudes, the poor in spirit to them is given the kingdom of heaven. Oh, Father, in myself, I am so poor in my natural nature, my intellect, my power, my wisdom, my, my, all my, 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 is all worthless compared to the riches of your glory, to the inheritance of the saints in the light, to the wonders and beauties of your own holiness, Father. Now, now I partake of these glories, these unsearchable riches of Christ, while I am the weakest and the least of all saints, yet you have granted me to enjoy the riches of Christ's glory, the life he has with you in heaven. Oh, Father, I love this humility by which I have access, by which I can trust and rely and depend for all these glories and riches to be unveiled in me. Oh, Father, I want more of the humility of Jesus. I want more of this humility of Jesus, Father. Father, I long to be perfected. Jesus said in Matthew 11, 27, learn of me that I'm gentle and humble of heart and you will find rest. Where you've struggled with falling short of God's glory, where you've struggled with failure, where you struggled with the world's temptations and all the devil's lies, you come to rest in the sufficiency of his love and you love this humility by which you are perfected in your submission to the Father, by which you are perfected in your dependence on the Father, by which you are perfected in the freedom of self, in the complete perfection of surrender, of holy surrender, all to Jesus I surrender. Oh, Father, I thank you for this humility that you of Jesus that you give in us. Amen. Have a good day.